Well, tomorrow I am going to Minnesota to see my girlfriend. Woohoo! And on Wednesday, we're going to the House on the Rock. So cool. I want to go to that. But, like, what the fuck else is there in Wisconsin? So, like... Well, there's... Cheese. Packers. Fallen Angels. Like, that's the thing. I I would love to go to Wisconsin, but... What the fuck is, or I'd love to go to House on the Rock, but like, then you're going to Wisconsin, like you're committing to going to Wisconsin. (laughs) And there's nothing else in Wisconsin I'm interested in. Northern Wisconsin, no less. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to explain to people what the House on the Rock is. It's, it's, it's featured prominently in American Gods, both the novel and next season of the show. It's like madness given material form. Yeah, it's, it's, I, the best description I could come up with is... It's like if David Lynch built a house. Well, built Disneyland. Yeah. That's the house on the rock. Kind of, yeah. That's a really good description because who the fuck knows, man? It's 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 like people are like, House of the Rock, what is that thing? It's a roadside attraction. It's like one of those little uh, Americana roadside attractions. It's like, like the Uber roadside attraction. Yeah, it's like the giant ball of twine and shit. Isn't there like a whole glass room that juts out over a canyon? Yeah. And like it started out as like a Frank Lloyd Wright um, tribute house. But then I forget like if the right if the Frank Lloyd Wright family wouldn't give him permission or if the guy just went insane or both. But then he just started adding shit. And when I when I say adding shit, I mean a whole room of coin operated machine like towns where stuff happens and then there's the fucking carousel and like angels made out of store mannequins with wings on them and a whole glass room that juts out over a canyon and like it's if if david lynch built a theme park this would be it yeah that's a good description of it because it's insanity and i'm i'm they haven't the producers of american gods they've said they're filming there but i don't know if they're done filming there or if they're still filming there. That would be cool if you ran into them. I would, because I, well, the first thing I would do is I would go up and I would ask him at Shane to be my father. <laughs> because that would be awesome. No, if Ian McShane Maybe was... that's not how you introduce yourself, because no, that might weird him out a little bit. If Ian McShane was your dad, you'd kind of want to get in trouble just to have him yell at you, because that would sound amazing. I mean, you could say that for so many. Like, you could say that about Patrick Stewart. Well, yeah, but no, Ian McShane's You could have said that about Alan Rickmellon. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. No, but Ian Ian McShane has just got this nightmare velvet that comes out of his mouth. (laughs) I'm pretty sure his own kids were, like, in and out of trouble all through high school just to have Dad yell at them. I don't know. Because that's... My dad had a really cool voice. And I didn't like it when he yelled at me. Well, your dad set the talk on fire. And there was one time we pissed my dad off so much that he started yelling at us in Irish. And here's the thing. Technically, Irish was my father's first language. But they stopped really teaching it in any real way when he was a kid. So, like, he didn't remember much of it. He knew, like, the sign of the cross, the Hail Mary, and the swear words. The basic, you know? I don't remember what we did, but all of a sudden our father was yelling at us in Irish and we couldn't understand what he, we were sa- what he was saying. And we we're like, Jesus Christ, he's speaking in tongues. We're going to die. Oh, hello, Grady. You want to sh- you want to say hi to Tara? Come. Here. No, do not knock over my chair again. <laughs> OK, well, fine. Fuck off then. He doesn't want to say uh, hi to you. I got ch- He has to chase the ghosts. <laughs> he's got he's been running up and down the hall a lot. I don't know what's up. All right. It's that time. We've got news. And Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't even. We've got just some general weirdness. Speaking of I, David Lynch shit. I know you didn't like Twin Peaks last night, man. I was fucking invested. I'm done. That I'm was out. the craziest shit I've ever seen. I'm done. I'm there for it. Dan looked at me and he was like, did, did you slip me acid? I'm done. I'm I was fuck- like, I don't know. He's he's fucking with us. That's all it is. I'm t- I just, Yeah. I'm done. That's what he does. 
Like I have a friend who's still obsessing over Mr. Strawberry and I'm, who's Mr. Strawberry. And I'm like, Mr. Strawberry is fucking nobody. Don't worry about it. You're never going to get that answer. Like that's a David Lynch thing to just throw some shit out there. That doesn't matter that you're going to obsess over for no reason. Well, you know what? I give up. Bye bye. You didn't watch me to watch the show. I don't watch a damn show. Anyway, I'm there. Get the intro going. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here from the sim, but we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? What's wrong with my video? Crazy. Oh. I don't like you being glitchy. Stop being glitchy. Anyway. But we're, this is definitely, a, yeah, there's no other word for, for this opening story. This is some David Lynch shit. That, that's all. They, it got sent to you. It got sent to me. I I dare you to make less sense. This And, and what makes it so David Lynch is that this is like accepted as a, a normal thing, even though it's not a normal thing at all. Man steals mummified toe yeah. from Dawson City Hotel's infamous soured toe cocktail. Get it? You get it? It's a sour toe cocktail. Yeah. It's a pun. How is, is that? Like, what are health codes like in Canada? Because <laughs> here, I don't think you could do that. You want a toe? I'll get you a toe. I can get you a toe. No old guy. Get you a toe. Downtown sit hotel in Dawson City is counting its fingers and toes, and there's at least one missing. <laughs> Yukon Hotel's sourdough saloon is down one human toe after a patient boasted about and then followed through with stealing a mummified toe that is used in the saloon's infamous sour toe cocktail on Saturday. We are furious, said Terry Lee, the hotel's toe captain who performs the sour toe ceremony. Guy asked to do the toe after the 9 to 11 p.m. toe hours. One of the new staff served it to him to be nice. This is how he pays her back. What a low life. Cocktail involves downing a shot of whiskey that contains a human toe inside the glass. Drinker's lips must touch the toe in order to be initiated into the club and issued a certificate. Why? 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 What What I love about this story is everyone's acting all indignant about this shit. Like, yeah. this is, this is, like, how dare you? And no one is going, why the fuck are you making a drink with a mummified human toe? What is wrong with us? Yeah. And where do you get them? Did you see? It says, luckily, we had a couple of backup toes. Backup toes? Why? Why did you have backup toes? Where do you get? It does say later, toes are very hard to come by. We have backup toes. We really need this one back. What like, how much does being a bartender at this place suck? Oh, we lost our toe again. Jerry, you're the newbie. Maybe this, maybe this is just a reason to pay your bar tab on time. Now, as I understand it, this story was updated, and this dude mailed it back with an apology. Yeah! Canada. Which, that's another thing. You know how everything in the mail goes through the x-ray machines now? Yeah. That package went through an x-ray machine, and somebody saw a picture of a human toe in the package. <laughs> What are, what are Canadian health codes like? And what's the Canadian postal system like? Because I'm pretty sure you can't mail body parts here in America. Well, they you can mail them in Canada. So any aspiring grave robbers, Canada is a burgeoning field. Like I'm considering running off to Canada as a refugee when America dies. But I'm concerned about the health codes in their <laughs> public eating establishments now. Because you're allowed to have a drink with a toe. And people think that's normal. Oh. And speaking of the Lynchian nonsense, it there's another one. I don't even... Uh, this, this happened in this... Uh, what was this? 
Royal Oaks Liquor Store in Arcadia. I believe that's in California. It's being reported by CBS Los Angeles. This is one of those moments, and we've got video. We got video. People leave them their toes in their will. And it can be only be served in drinks of at least 80 proof. People are bequeathing their fucking toes to this bar to serve in whiskey? Man, the economy's hard on everybody. I tell Canada, you. man. I don't... I, I don't know, man. I don't know, Canada. This happened... It, and uh, to continue on, this is, this is some David Lynch bullshit here. This happened in a liquor store. You see that back there? Cause it the ruckus? That's a peacock! That's a fucking peacock in a liquor store! Wow. You're gonna have to put that over. Did you ever see the episode of Supernatural with the giant depressed teddy bear? Yes. <laughs> That's what this is making me think of. The peacock in the liquor store? Yeah, because they found the giant depressed teddy bear because he had ransacked the liquor store for all the booze and porn. Oh Peacock is just knocking everything over. <laughs> there's there's animal I, there's the police to capture the peacock. You think they're trained for that? I don't. I, I don't believe I don't believe Something disorderly foul? I don't believe they are. Just imagine the surprise of the folks who work and shop at the Royal Oaks Liquor Store when a peacock wandered in and wouldn't leave. Bird ended up flying on top of the shelves, knocking bottles over before animal control came and helped the peacock with safety. Oh, animal control. Okay, they are trained for that. The peacock flapped around the store, trying to find a way out. At one point, it flew right towards Ronnie Ghanem, uh, who manages the store. He took video after calling animal control for help. It flew toward me. I didn't know they could actually fly high, but it flew up above the counter and landed on top of the ice cream freezer. Ghanem tried to help the peacock find the door, but instead the bird perched atop the wine shelves. Bird's eye view of the business below, haha. -ha. Customers were still coming and going, and some of them even took pictures with the bird. Because, <laughs> of course. Peacock. It appears to be a girl peacock, because it's not all colorful and yeah. fancy. Peacock ended up knocking down about $500 worth of wine and champagne. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Peacock's got good taste. I just... <laughs> like, you know... isn't working retail doesn't stuff? <laughs> exactly! You're in a liquor store, which is already... There's just some aura about going into a liquor store. That's a tough job. It's just strange. Even I had to do it. And in South Carolina, when I moved back here, that was really unfortunate because in Illinois, they'll sell hard liquor at the Walgreens. I don't have to go to the liquor store. It's great. There's liquor in the Walgreens. There's liquor in the Walmart. I don't have to deal with the liquor store because there's just some weird aura about the liquor store that feels strange. And it kind of depends on the liquor store, I think. If it's like a big, like we have some up here, at least we have big fancy liquor stores. And then we have like the CD liquor store run by a guy with three teeth. Yeah. Like there's both kinds. Dan tends to favor the big fancy liquor stores because he has 20 different flavors of bitters and 16 different kinds of bourbon. And I don't even know what half the shit on the bar in our house is. But he likes the big fancy ones because he likes to buy big fancy bar stuff. But you're already working in a liquor store, and then all of a sudden, you're only having to, having to deal with the with the, the uh, yeah, lottery, the drunks, the lotto tickets, all yeah. that shit. And then there's a fucking peacock, and she's pissed off, and she's knocking shit over, and the customers aren't helping. They're taking pictures with the goddamn thing. And have you ever What's heard? The... No, no, no one in the audience is going to get this. But what's the old David Lee Roth video? With the guy working at the store, and the really angry lady is knocking shit off the shelves and says, My doctor says I have to take a laxative. Do you remember that video? Vaguely, yes. <laughs> That's what this is. Uh, nobody knows what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> and on it's top, really weird, obscure. I couldn't even tell you what song it's for. On top of that, have you ever heard a peacock? Yes. They are the loudest fucking birds. Yeah, they don't have a pretty call to match their pretty feathers. Like, they scream. <laughs> they 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 bellow. They make the, they shriek like little banshees. And they they rattle windows and shit. They are terrifying. You think somebody's being murdered? I'm not even going to try to imitate it because I blow out my microphone. It's it's nasty. And you have to deal with all this working in a fucking liquor store. Yeah. Like you definitely don't get paid enough for this shit. No. Oh, Mike knows that video. He says it's the song Yankee Rose. Mike. Good job. Well, now let's move along to teachers being awful. I just leave. Uh. School's over. What's left to be awful about? Well, this is this is actually in London. So. So at like Hogwarts. Well, yeah. Kinda, because Hogwarts had a mortality rate, too. Schools forced to apologize after pupils told to write suicide notes for English homework. Why? Children at Tallis School in Southeast London were given the task as part of their studies on Shakespeare, on Shakespeare's Scottish play. I'm not going to say the name. I'm live on the air. That's only for stage. I don't care. I'm superstitious. <laughs> I used to do stage. It gets drilled into you. You don't say that word. Yeah. School in London has come under fire after telling 60 teenage pupils to write suicide notes during an English class assignment. The task was given as part of this year's group studies on Shakespeare's Scottish play. If you don't know what the Scottish play is, Google it. I'm not saying the word out loud. Children were asked to imagine Lady Scottish Play's thoughts in her suicidal state. Senior staff at Thomas Tallis School in Kidbrook apologized for upsetting students, some, are, who, some of whom were said to have friends who had taken their own lives. I mean, did Why you... Why would you think this is a good idea? Yeah! Like, I've had the... The, your first assignment as a journalism student is always to write your own obituary. Which is different, though. It's different because we are all going to die. Yes. Unless cybernetics happens in our lifetime. But chances are, we are all going to die. We're still going to die. Or with our robot selves. We're st that, that's, you're still dead. Continuity yeah. of consciousness. You're still dead. You're going to die. But, like, like, a suicide, at, at, and, and at that age... When some of them might really be thinking about that, like that's... This is not homework. This is sadism. Yeah. I mean, it didn't... You and with this play, like there's so much, there's so many other writing assignments you could give from this play. It's a pretty, it's one of the most accessible of Shakespeare's plays. Like it's one of the easiest to track and follow, you know? And there's a lot of crazy shit that happens. There's fucking witches. There's witches. Ghosts. It, murder orgies. Actually, I think the orgy is just in Sleep No More. I don't think that's in the original play. But there's Wait, a lot to you, work with. You work with kids. You understand kids. Kids, especially teenagers, drama, way the fuck up here. Everything is the end of the world. I was no Hormones, different. Hormones all the fuck over the place. I was no different. You were no different. There are all sort of con contributing factors to make teenagers not the most stable creatures. Yeah. You, you know understand. better. This is this task. Why would you, you know better? Oh, and speaking of know better, there's a couple things on this story. First of all, I'm going to be bitching about the headline because this next one. Fantastic. No, you'll oh. see it and you're going to understand why. Fuck, I might not even explain it. But there, there's another thing. There, There is a stereotype of the cantankerous old neighborhood bastard. You know that old guy who... who Get just, off my lawn. Yeah. And you'd Sitting like... On the stoop with like 
a can of fucking old Milwaukee yelling at people. You'd like to think that was overblown and and sort of a uh, not 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 a thing that really happened so much that people are better than this. And then you get a story like but people this. are never better. And it's Florida. Of course, it's fucking Florida. Florida man's mousetrap plot fails bigly. Why is that? A, that's not a word. That's can we not. not can we can not? We not justify that can we not give that i'm not going to say his fucking name but we shouldn't give him that because it's not a word and i'm really getting sick of the english language being bent over the fucking chair literally now means not literally like enough enough i can't anymore eventually, Bigly, not a word eventually we're just going to be going around going oh 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 and pointing we're at stuff back. we're going to be cavemen and we're going to yeah. com communicate entirely in grunts and emojis Damn kids. 3D printed poop emojis. The hard way. Um, convinced one of his neighbors was stealing items from his mailbox. Nicholas Dibble. That sounds like a name from like a rolled uh rolled doll book, doesn't it? Yeah. Like Matilda or some shit. Nicholas Dibble hatched a plot to literally catch the thief red-handed. Dibble, a 63-year-old Floridian. Suspected his mail was swiped as retaliation by neighbors upset he had called police about criminal activity in his brand new neighborhood. In an interview, Dibble referred to, quote, the drug dealer across the street and a woman who runs a, quote, house of prostitution next door. Sure. Dibble, who is disabled, told DSG he lived in the neighborhood for 25 years, adding that he worked for nearly 40 years as a meat cutter for the public supermarket chain. In what must have seemed like a brilliant idea at the time, Dibble placed a mousetrap inside his mailbox and raised the red flag. The goal, police report notes, was to catch someone stealing his mail. Oh, no. Dibble, investigators noted, had planned to make the mail carrier aware of the trap. However, Dibble's plan, of course, backfired. Cynthia mm -hmm. Humphrey Smith, a 37-year-old postal worker, came at a different route in time last Friday when she reached into the mailbox to retrieve outgoing mail. Her hand slammed in the trap. She suffered pain and throbbing in the hand. And police had told police that her hand had just recently healed from being broken. Police arrived at Dibble residence. He was in, dan not, he was in danger of being arrested for battery, but Dibble said, quote, the sweet woman did not want to file charges against me. Ask about the execution of his mousetrap gambit. Riddle, uh, Dibble said, well, it caught the wrong person. Couple things. Couple things. One, you're a fucking asshole. Mm hmm. Two, I'm confused as to how you think you were going to fool your, your ne'er-do-well neighbors into thinking you got your mail when they hadn't gotten theirs. <laughs> yes. Like, well, no, it's he put up the outgoing flag. What he did was he was he made it like he was sending stuff out so that they would come by and steal his mail before the mail people showed up. Who's going to steal outgoing mail? Who steals mail? I mean, unless there's really good magazines in there. No, what's well, the fucking steal? You say that my dad was paranoid about this. He made me wait until the absolute last minute to take and put checks and mail stuff in the mailbox because he was convinced someone was going to come by and take something out of his mailbox. He wasn't convinced that there were prostitutes and drug dealers on the street, but he was just paranoid that someone might. My mom was really adamant about you do not open someone else's mail because that is a federal crime. So like, even when I was a little kid, like she opened bank accounts for us all as little kids so we could save money. If I got a statement, for my bank account, she wouldn't open it for me. Like she'd hand it to me and be like, I'll read it to you, but you have to open it because I can't open your mail. And, so and, I'm still a little weird about that. Like Dan will just open something and I'm like, that was mine. And also and like, it was a it was a magazine bill. And I'm like, but it, but it was mine. <laughs> Fucking with the mail truck and the mail delivery person is federal. also a federal offense. Federal pound me in the ass prison. If especially the at that she is so lucky he was not 
she she didn't want to press charges. Yeah. They are government employees. Because they don't fuck with that shit. No. Post office does not fuck <clears throat> around. They have a difficult job. I mean, you know, if it were me and I was worried about that shit, I would rig up some elaborate remote control device that would lock the mailbox that I could push a button and it would unlock it when I saw the mail truck come by or some shit like that. Even better now. They make they make fucking Wi-Fi doorbells that hook up to your phone. So yeah. that with a camera on it. You could put a fucking camera, you could put a fucking GoPro on your mailbox. And see if someone was stealing your mail. And get a get a tape of whoever's walking up to your mailbox. And then when you go to the police again, you'll have evidence. Now you just look like a crazy. Instead of having harmed somebody. Now you're just a crazy old man. Why would you do that? Oh, next up is L.A. Like, Home Alone is only cute when you're a little kid. Yeah, because everyone in that movie, in the real world, they would be dead. Yeah. Everyone, even Kevin would be dead. Yeah. Because remember, Kevin slipped on the ice and just, wham! He would be dead. Everyone in Home Alone died. <laughs> Everyone. It's actually a horror movie. But they even, couldn't sell it as that, so they rewrote it as a wacky comedy. Even his family died. The plane went down. Everyone at Home Alone died. They're all dead. Well, I mean, his mom got in a van with some very unsavory polka musicians. God knows. His mom died. Musicians. She died. Polka she killed him. She got beaten to death with an accordion. Ah, next up, L.A. You know, the new Mad Max film has been a big, big, big. It's made so many male, males angry because of the depiction of female empowerment, whatnot. I fucking love the movie. It's great. So this seems <laughs> this seems like someone took it, it's kind of like with Fight Club. Someone took the wrong message away from the movie. Armed with illegal weapons, claiming a man claiming to be Mad Max arrested in Barstow Desert. Dystopian action classic Mad Max, the lead character, clad in black leather and armed with a sawed-off shotgun, sets out to avenge the death of his wife and child who were killed by a violent motorcycle gang. Is that the plot of the original? Yeah. That's really conventional. Yeah. How does it get from there to Tina Turner and fights to the death and... <laughs> War rings. It it goes crazy is what happened. Yeah. It's unclear if vengeance was on the mind of a writer on whom uh, on a quad whom authorities say was armed with a sawed off shotgun and dressed as Mad Max when he was pulled over late Thursday in the Barstow Desert. Jack Lee Ernest uh, caught the attention of San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies at about 11 p.m. Deputy tried to stop him near Leona Road, but Ernest attempt Ernest attempted to ride away. Sheriff's Department said in a statement, Sheriff's official said Ernest behaved so suspiciously he was detained. As the deputy approached the 39-year-old Barstow resident, this wasn't... Old enough to know better. This wasn't some 20-year-old... This wasn't even a teenager. This was the, he found... Someone a year younger than me. He found brass knuckles and a sawed-off shotgun. Both are illegal. The ammunition was tactically attached to the shotgun for easy access. No shit. This is actually what he had on him. Have a look at that shit. Wow. Saw it. What? I'm looking at the picture. Yeah. That thing actually looks dangerous and not to someone who you're pointing it at, just in general, dangerous. Yeah. Uh, tactically attached to the shotgun for easy access, Debbie found two large knives positioned in similar fashion. Ernest claimed he fashioned himself as Mad Max. Okay, number one, Mad Max, he has a car. Yes. He has a, he has a car with a sweet Hemi Cuda in it. That sounds like a kind of fish to me, but yes. <laughs> Chromed and, 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 you know, beautiful. You had a four-wheel ATV. And you're in Barstow. Yeah. Do, do you know? Also in Australia, right? Yes. 
Do, do you know who drives four-wheeled ATVs in Mad Max movies? The disposable bad guys who die. Yeah. They get blown up by the score. <laughs> if you're riding an ATV in a, in a Mad Max movie, you're already dead. You don't even have a name tag. Just lay down. <laughs> As... But, like, where was he fucking going? Armed to the teeth like that. Dick... Like, was this just... Win dixie I don't fucking know. Random cosplay? Or did you have several murders planned? I mean... Because that's concerning. Yeah, and, and just... Th this... Uh... This... There's a fine line between Mad Max cosplay and Lone Wolf Shooter. He is lucky that the police actually pulled his ass over. Because sawed-off shotgun, that's very illegal. Yeah. Very, very illegal. Brass knuckles, kind of illegal. Sawed-off shotguns, very, very fucking illegal. Yeah, but let's be honest. You pull over a guy with brass knuckles, you're going to be like, those are illegal. Like, you can't have those. Pull over a guy with knives, brass knuckles, and a sawed-off shotgun, you're going to be a little more concerned. <laughs> I had a friend in college who got pulled over. I think I've told this story before. He had a collection of various swords and knives and... And uh, he got he couldn't keep it in the dorms, and for some reason he wouldn't leave it home with mom, so he had it all in his car. And then he got pulled over in downtown Bridgeport, which I don't know how well any of you know Connecticut, but downtown Bridgeport is not a great neighborhood. So the cop, he, first of all, he opens the glove compartment to get his registration, and his throwing knives fall out. His illegal throwing knives. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. Cop, like, why do you have those? And he's like, well, you know, I just have them because I'm a weird goth dude. Well, do you have any other weapons in the car? Well, there's a machete in the back seat. Okay, anything else? Yeah, there's a four foot claymore and some other swords and like a katana and some other knives in the trunk. Like, he spent the night in jail to nobody's surprise. Like, and that, to, to that cop, it should be like, where the fuck are you going? This is Bridgeport, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there was an immortal he needed to be had at that time of day. He just, he couldn't keep it in the dorms, so he kept it all in his car. Get a storage locker! In case Braveheart broke out. Rent a fucking, st rent a fucking... We all... We all gave him no small end of shit for this. <laughs> really just leave your mom was an hour away, dude. Just leave it at your <laughs> mom's house. Uh, and finally I think, Hey, I think I told that story before, guys. I'm sorry. And finally tonight. I just I what? Ugh. Half-naked man sprays fire extinguishers at Hotel Tuval. Oh, it's nice to get back to the classics. Tallahassee, Florida. Florida. Man is shit out of him too. Look at him. A man has been arrested after a disturbance at Hotel Duval in Tallahassee. The police say the incident began when a man began harassing customers at the hotel bar. When the suspect was confronted by the staff, he reportedly grabbed the employee's genitals. Not paid enough for that shit. Police say the suspect then removed his pants, took off running to the hotel, and pulled multiple fire alarms. Police say the suspect was wearing women's undergarments. As officials search the hotel for the suspect, police say he removed two fire extinguishers and sprayed multiple hotel patrons and an employee. The suspect identified as 31-year-old Ryan Campbell was apprehended by police as he tried to flee the hotel. Campbell was taken to the hotel for evaluation. He was cleared from the hospital and booked into the Leon County Jail. Now, when they clear you for that, that means you don't have a mental problem. You're just an asshole. Yeah, that means you're not crazy. You're just a flaming turd dickbag. Because... Yeah. How does it go from being told, look, you're harassing people, sir, could you please stop, to grabbing dicks 
yanking off your pants and your G-string, spraying a fire extinguisher, running from the cuff. That escalated quickly. Yeah. <laughs> How did that seem like the most rational reaction to you? It's... Like, I feel like even, like, knocking shit over and wrecking the bar is a more rational reaction than random sexual assault, drop and trowel, and fire extinguisher. You know, like, back in my day, if someone started giving you a shit in a bar, you'd punch them. You just flipped a table. Yeah! Like a person. You didn't turn into a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon. This is America. <laughs> this is some Woody Woodpecker bullshit, you know? <laughs> I mean, Here. was he even a guest at the hotel? It doesn't say. Which is, it's one of those things that you have to, people, I don't understand. People go to hotels for the bar. I never get that. Is the bar in the hotel really that good? If you don't have any good bars in your town. Uh, all right, I've got I've to find if this. Your, if your town doesn't have any good bars and there's a nice hotel, then the hotel might have a nice bar. But I, I've got to see for myself. I'm searching the place. Hotel Duval, Tallahassee. Let's see. Okay, well, apparently it's a historic boutique hotel. Oh. Let's see so what... then, yeah, the bar might be an actual attraction. There's a rooftop bar and... Mm -hmm. Okay, well, th yeah, th when I see this picture here, this does, this picture uh, does not, this is the, the Le Rock Lounge. This does, uh, does not make me think of a place where you go to yank your pants off with, 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 with you know, with, with panties and pulling fire extinguishers. Look, I'm not going to judge the guy for what kind of underwear he's wearing. I also wear women's undergarments. And if a dude wants to wear women's underwear, I'm not here to fucking judge you. I don't know your life. That makes you happy. Cool. I am going to judge you if you take off your pants in public and assault people and act like a lunatic, though. Pull the fire. What? You do realize once you pull one fire extinguisher, fire alarm, they all yeah, go they're off. All, they're all go. Like, you don't have to pull them all. You keep pulling them. No. It doesn't make them louder. No. It's like if you press the elevator button more than once, it doesn't come any faster. You're just being annoying. And then multiple fire, ex two fire extinguishers. So he had one under each arm, just spraying people down. <laughs> That's actually a really funny image. <laughs> like a pantsless fire extinguisher T-Rex. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, how how is this a good time for anyone? How is this a good time? I don't see how that's a party. That's, I mean, that's... You go out, you have yourself a couple drinks, you hang out with people. If you don't like the clientele, find a new bar. Don't go... Don't, if, if you if you don't like it, don't leave a tip. Yeah. Go somewhere else. Because now you're in jail. Now you're in jail. Yeah, can, charged with battery, grand theft of, and tampering with a fire extinguisher, battery on officer or EMT, and disorderly conduct. That's a lot. You could have just gone to another bar. Yeah. <laughs> or... Oh gone home and taken your meds he wasn't crazy it's it's pretty much that they the hospital said nope he ain't our problem well it doesn't necessarily mean you're not crazy it means you're not currently a danger to yourself or others like they're not gonna admit you psych unless you're gonna kill other people or yourself if you're batshit crazy but you're batshit crazy talking to butterflies they're gonna let you go well, that's a that's just kind of sad they don't really have the capacity to oh you know, you know? okay he's a lumberjack and he's okay <laughs> likes to wear women's clothing and hang around in bars <laughs> and 
there. Yeah, the first thing we learned this week is um proportional response. Don't don't escalate a situation beyond the point it needs to Look be. Look at the situation you're in and think <clears throat> what's the sensible way to respond to this? Normally does not involve taking your pants off. Almost never. Almost never. Almost never. There are rare occurrences, but... You might have really beautiful panties, but you are not free to show them unless someone specifically asks. Mm. We've learned that cosplay can go a wee bit too far. Like when you're using real weaponry, yeah. And also, if you're on an ATV, just own up the fact you're not Mad Max. You're not fucking Mad Max. Can you afford to get Mad Max's car? No, you ain't fucking Mad Max. Fuck off with that shit. It's an ATV! It is among the least cool it is, transportation really is. sources. <sighs> and I drive a fucking Honda Fit. Okay, so that's me saying that. I drive a roller skate. And my transportation is cooler than yours. We've learned that modern technology allows us to surveil potential thieves and entrap them that way, not fucking assault anyone. You don't booby trap your fucking mailbox. This is, again, this is some Looney Tunes plans. This is like a Daffy Duck plan. Or, like, if you must booby trap your mailbox, maybe just make it something annoying and difficult to get rid of. Like, snap open a bunch of ballpoint pens in there so they have ink on their hand for days. Like, and you'll be like, hey, how'd you get that ink all over your hands, Phil? What? Somebody stole Dan's lunch in the lunchroom at his job this week, and I told him he should get a container of yogurt and empty out the yogurt, fill it with mayonnaise, and reseal it. And put it in there. Nobody gets hurt, but fuck you. You know better. Don't steal people's lunch. I'll teach you. You think about this shit. I do. We've learned that maybe consider your class before you give them a homework assignment. Maybe consider basic human empathy. Yeah. Before yeah. you give a homework assignment. You know, humanity. We've learned that sometimes in retail, you end up in a situation you are definitely not paid enough to fucking deal with. Yeah, and, and that's not in the handbook. It's nowhere in the book did it say shit about peacocks. Not in the employee handbook. Nowhere. I checked. It's not a Slytherin. Tara is a fucking Ravenclaw, right? I took three different quizzes, including the Pottermore one, and everyone came up Ravenclaw. And finally, we've learned it's not the fact that people were drinking whiskey over a toe that was weird. It was the fact that someone stole it. Yeah, that was the problem. Why? It's I wonder a... how much that drink costs. That, they didn't say that, how much that drink costs. Your Cause dignity. Because people, people pay for that privilege. Yeah, you're, it, it, it costs your dignity and a little piece of your soul. Yeah, but I assume they also make you give them money for it. <laughs> if you're paying for the privilege of putting a dead toe in your mouth, you are not good with money. No. 